Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 4230, Abstract Algebra 2 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In this lecture 26, uh, we're going to continue what we started in lecture 25, and specifically we're going to focus on this idea of algebraic extensions. In particular, at the end of lecture 25, we had introduced the idea of the minimal polynomial of an algebraic element from a field extension. Um, and mentioned how the degree of that minimal polynomial uh, gives you the degree of a simple extension. Now, in this video, I want to continue developing this idea and particularly start off with two examples of computing uh, minimal polynomials and such. In particular, uh, let's look at this first example. Take the polynomial f of x equals x squared minus 2. Uh, now, we're viewing this as a polynomial over the rational field. Now, in particular, this polynomial f is an irreducible polynomial. There's two ways you could see it. Since it's a quadratic polynomial, if it's reducible, that happens if and only if it has a linear factor, which happens if and only if it has a root. Now, by the rational roots theorem, the only possible rational roots of f of x here would be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. And a quick calculation would show that neither of those four numbers work as roots of this polynomial. So that would make it irreducible. But it turns out there's even easier uh, criteria we could use here. We could use Eisenstein's criteria. Because after all, if you look at all of the terms other than the leading and constant terms, they're all coefficient zero. So you could pick any prime you want. In particular, when you look at two there, two divides it, but four doesn't. So by Eisenstein's criterion, uh, we get that's an irreducible polynomial, all right? But we, you know, that, that that's a little bit of overkill in the situation, but still, we, we should be specific here. We have this irreducible polynomial, and we know from past work that if you take the polynomial x squared minus 2, uh, its roots are going to be plus or minus the square root of 2. In particular, if we put the square root of 2 into that, you get the square root of 2 squared minus 2. That will give you 2 minus 2, which equals 0, and the negative square root will give you something else. Uh, I should say it'll give you something similar to what we just did a moment ago. Um, and so we have the two roots, which are not rational numbers, right? The square root of 2 is not rational. Uh, this is, you know, this goes back to the days of Euclid, uh, who proved the square root of 2 is an irrational number. Uh, and so let's look at the extension field where we adjoin the square root of 2 to the rational numbers. Well, by Kronecker's theorem, this field q adjoin the square root of 2, it's going to be isomorphic to the field q adjoin x mod out by the ideal x squared minus 2. Okay, so we can always build an extension field uh, to contain the root of an irreducible polynomial. And so the field q adjoin the square root of 2, you're adjoining the square root of 2 to q, and you're going to get everything as a consequence of that. Now, if you get the square root of 2, you're also going to get the negative square root of 2 because that's the additive inverse, and this is a field after all. And so in this field, q adjoin the square root of 2, we didn't just gain 1, but we gained all of the roots of our polynomial x squared minus 2. Now, also because of previous work, it's important to note that when you look at the field q adjoin the square root of 2, that um, as a as a rational vector space, it'll be two-dimensional and has a basis one plus the square root of two. That is, every element of this field can be written as a plus b times the square root of two, where a and b are arbitrary rational numbers, like so. And like I also mentioned, the polynomial f of x, it factors into two linear factors, x minus the square root of two and x plus the square root of two. If we view this as a polynomial over q adjoin, let me write that q again, q adjoin the square root of 2 adjoin x there. So if you extend the field of coefficients for your polynomials, our polynomial f factors by adjoining the square root of 2 here. Now, uh, before we go any further here, I want to mention that, of course, first of all, I, I guess I should say that uh, this polynomial x squared minus 2 is, in fact, the minimal polynomial of the square root of 2, also the negative square root of 2. But f of x is the minimum polynomial of the square root of 2 over the rational numbers. This is the, the smallest um, irreducible polynomial with rational coefficients for which the square root of 2 is a root. And, of course, when we talk about the uh, minimal polynomial, we do assume that it's monic in that situation here. Um, 
And this the, we, we can see this pretty easy because if you're a root of an irreducible quadratic, then that has to be your minimal polynomial because the minimal polynomial will divide every polynomial which takes the square root of two as a root. Um, in which case, if square root of, of x squared minus two wasn't the minimal polynomial, that would mean that x minus square root of two would have to be the minimal polynomial because that's the only polynomial of smaller degree. Uh, but that would imply the square root of two is a rational number, which it's not. So we then, we've now proven um, x squared minus two is the minimal polynomial of the square root of two over the rational field. But I wanna make mention that um, when your root comes from a radical of some kind, in this case, the square root of two, it's very easy to construct the minimal polynomial. We can basically work backwards uh, like we do here. It's like, okay, I wanna come up with a polynomial which has the square root of two as a root. Well, since you have the square root of two here, by construction, the square root of two is a number which squares to be two. So if you take this equation, x equals the square root of two and you square both sides, you're gonna end up with x squared equals two. Um, for which then if you move the 2 to the other side, you end up with x squared minus 2 equals 0. And since we chose x to equal that value, we see that x squared minus 2 is then this minimal polynomial. We, it's the smallest polynomial we created here. Uh, and therefore, the minimal polynomial of the square root of 2 over the rational field is x squared minus 2. And I should emphasize that this is the minimal polynomial over the rational field, because if you want the minimal polynomial of the square root of 2 over the over the q adjoin the square root of 2, then you just get x minus the square root of 2. So it matters, it matters which field you're referring to. So if you're looking in the, few, the field q join the square root of 2, then the minimal polynomial is x minus the square root of 2. If you're talking about the rational field, then you're going to get this x squared minus 2 in that situation. So the base field matters. And that's why the minimal polynomial does depend on the fields you're looking at. And this was a pretty simple example. Let's turn up the heat a little bit. Now let's look at the polynomial um, x squared minus 16x, excuse me, x to the fourth minus 16x squared plus 4. This is a rational polynomial, clearly. It is likewise irreducible. Now, uh, of course, Eisenstein's criteria doesn't apply here because uh, when you look at the con uh, the constant term there, you have a four. There's no um, other prime we could use other than two, but that doesn't work. You can still use, so while you can't use Eisenstein's criteria, you can still use the rational roots test um, for which, because of the rational roots test, the only possible roots are going to be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four. And I'll leave it to the viewer. Just pause it right now if you want to, just to check, um, do any of those um, do any of those six numbers work as roots? None of them do. Um, now, this is a degree four polynomial. Um, there is the possibility that maybe it factors into two irreducible quadratics, right? I mean, that is a possibility, of course. But with this one, one could check that that is not the case whatsoever. Uh, this, this polynomial is, in fact, irreducible. Like I said, I'll leave that up to an exercise to the viewer here to verify such a thing. Um, I claim that the roots of this polynomial are going to be plus or minus the square root of 8 plus or minus 2 root 15, like so. So what here, of course, we mean is that there's a choice. You can choose plus or minus inside the radical. You can also choose plus or minus outside the radical. So there are four possible roots that I'm describing, but that makes sense because we have a degree 4 polynomial. We would anticipate we have these four roots here. Now, in this situation, let's take one of these roots. Um, so I'm gonna choose positive and positive in both situations. So take the number, the square root of eight plus two times the square root of 15. Take Q adjoin that, uh, that irrational number right there. Well, by Kronecker's theorem, this field where you take a root of this, poly this irreducible polynomial and join it to the rationals, this would be the same thing as taking the polynomial ring Q join X and modding out by this irreducible polynomial X to the fourth minus 16 X squared plus four. Uh, and so this gives us a field for which this polynomial G of X now has a root in it. And it doesn't just have one root, it actually does have two roots because if our field includes the square root of eight plus two square root of 15, it also includes its additive inverse, which was one of the other roots, negative square root of eight plus two root 15 there. Both of those belong there. So this polynomial, when you go to the extension field, then gains two of its roots. 
but does it have the other two? Um, I claim that that's a no, that if you take the square root of 8 minus 2 square root of 15 or its negation, those do not belong to this field. And so to try to see why that is, think of the following situation. Um, what would be a basis for this field? All right. Um, we've seen previously that we can, can, when it comes to a simple extension like this, if we take something like f adjoint alpha, you can always take as a basis the following set, 1 alpha squared, alpha cubed, alpha to the fourth, and then you keep on going. That, that by itself will give you a spanning set. And of course, by the pruning theorem, every spanning set can be pruned down into a basis. So at some point, since it's, well, if you take a with a simple extension, of course, I should say that this is an algebraic element. Um, if you have a transcendental element, that statement um, might have some issues, but we're, we're focusing on algebraic elements here. If you take a simple algebraic extension, we always have a basis by using the powers of the element. Um, and this will eventually uh, lead to a dependence relation. That's where this minimal polynomial comes from. Um, so as the square root of 8 plus 2 root square root of 15 is a root of that irreducible degree 4 polynomial, I do know that if I look at the powers of our of our root here, so you have 1, um, we'll just call this element alpha for the sake of uh, simplicity in our language here. So if you can take as your basis 1, alpha, this here would be alpha squared, this one would be alpha cubed. Um, now I, I can stop at alpha cubed because if I add alpha to the fourth, then I now have a dependency relation because of the minimal polynomial we had before. Uh, because because if you take uh, g of alpha, we know this is zero, it's a root of the polynomial. So this tells us that alpha to the fourth uh, minus 16 alpha squared plus 4 is equal to 0, which then tells us that alpha to the 4th is equal to 16 alpha squared minus 4. So any power of alpha 4 or larger can be rewritten as a linear combination of the smaller power. So this does, in fact, give us a basis. Now, I do want to simplify things a little bit here uh, because when you look at when you look at these alphas, right, when you square this term right here, uh, that is when you square alpha, and this is alpha squared right here, you're going to get 8 plus 2 square root of 15, for which 8 is a rational number you could subtract from that, 2 is a rational number you could divide by that. And so taking alpha squared is essentially the same thing as taking the square root of 15. So this field will contain a square root of 15, like so. Um, and then when you come to alpha cubed right here, again, you can rewrite this thing to make it a little bit cleaner. Um, if you have alpha cubed, that's essentially the same thing as having the square root of 120 plus 30 times the square root of 15, uh, which is going to be linearly independent from this uh, radical we had before, like so. And so you'll notice that when it came back to this element here, the square root of 8 minus 2 root 15, um, that when you look at these radicals, there's no combination that's going to uh, change the um, radicand, the term inside the radical here. The only thing that can change the possible radicands is when we're taking powers of alpha here, which like we said, we'll start off with the square root of 8 plus 2 root 15. We can produce a square root of 15, um, and we can produce the square root of 120 plus 30 square root of 15. Um, but besides those, we can only take linear combinations of these radicals, uh, for which you're not going to produce that one right there. All right, so when we adjoined alpha, one of the one of the roots of our polynomials, we gained two of the roots, it and its additive inverse, but we are still missing the other two um, roots of that polynomial. So if you were to factor g of x over the field q adjoined this, this q adjoined alpha here, um, you don't get a linear factorization. Um, in particular, you're going to get the following: um, g of x. Uh, which remember was x to the fourth minus 16 x squared plus four um, over q adjoint alpha this would factor as x squared minus eight plus two square root of 15 and x squared minus eight minus two times the square root of 15. so you get that factorization notice that this field q adjoint alpha does contain the field q adjoint the square root of 15 right? Because uh, square root of 15 will be contained in there. So this is a valid factorization over q adjoined the square root of 15. 
okay? So when you get a larger field, the fact that the polynomials can potentially factor more, uh, well, into smaller pieces, okay? Uh, but it turns out that this factor can also still factor further because our field contains a square root of eight plus two root 15. And so treating this as a difference of squares, we can factor it like this and we can factor it like this. Although this term right here, one can argue is still going to be irreducible in the Q adjoint, the square, well, Q adjoint alpha right here. And this came to what we described earlier. Um, this is a quadratic polynomial. If it factored, it has a root. But as we already observed, there is no root of the polynomial uh, for, for this polynomial right here. So this then gives you the complete factorization of G in that situation. We didn't quite get linear factors. Uh, and so the minimal polynomial of the minimal polynomial of our element alpha depends on the field, right? If we're looking at the field Q, our minimal polynomial turned out to be x to the fourth minus 16x squared plus four. Um, if we look at some intermediate field, Q would join the square root of 15, then in that situation, your polynomial mu uh, will factor at, so your minimal polynomial will be x squared minus eight plus uh, two times the square root of 15 because you can, you can factor that way. But of course, um, if you just adjoin all of alpha, then your minimal polynomial of alpha will just be x minus alpha. The minimal polynomial depends on which field we're looking at here. And be aware that adjoining one root of a polynomial doesn't necessarily give you all of the roots of the polynomial. Um, if you call, if we call alpha this element we keep on going with, alpha equals the square root of eight plus two root 15, Let's introduce another element called beta, which beta is the square root of eight minus two root 15. In that situation, you have these two distinct roots. Um, if you want your polynomial g of x to factor into linear factors, then your field would have to be alpha adjoin, uh, q adjoin alpha and beta. If you get those two roots, you get the other two, but one root isn't enough to get all of them. But like I said earlier, um, if we have a, if we have a number which is formed using radicals, we can actually utilize those radicals to form the minimal polynomial over the resultant field here. So take the number, the square root of eight plus two times the square root of 15. Since this is a square, you can square both sides, and in which case on the left-hand side, you'll get x squared on the right-hand side, you'll get eight plus two uh, square root of 15. Now, if you move this entire number to the right-hand side, you end up with x squared minus eight minus two square root of 15, and that then gave you the minimal polynomial over q adjoined the square root of 15, okay? Which the middle, if you, with the very first line, if you took x minus alpha equals zero, that gives you the minimal polynomial over q adjoined alpha. All right, so uh, we have to keep on going. It's like, oh, okay, if the square root of 15 is not a, is not in my field, it's not in the rational field, we keep on going. Um, so I'm going to move just the 8 to the other side. So we get square root, uh, excuse me, we get x squared minus 8 equals 2 times the square root of 15. We're now going to square both sides again. On the left-hand side, we will have to foil. Um, so you're going to get x squared times x squared, which is x to the fourth. You're going to get negative 8 times negative 8, which is positive 64. Then we're going to get uh, x squared times negative 8, a negative 8 times x squared. That gives you a negative 16x squared. And then on the right-hand side, when we square things, 2 squared is 4. The square root of 15 squared is 15. 4 times 15 is 60. If you subtract 60 from both sides, you end up with g of x equals 0. And so then we are able to construct the minimal polynomial mu of our number alpha as the, we found this minimal polynomial over the rational field that we see, of course, here. And so this example then provides to us um, basic examples of how we can, can actually construct um, the minimal polynomial of a number constructed using radicals uh, very much in this way. But of course, are all roots of polynomials constructed from radicals? Well, that's actually a fundamental question that drove a lot of the Galois theory we're gonna be seeing in the future. And we're gonna discover in the future that this process is not necessarily reversible, that there do exist polynomials whose solutions cannot be constructed from, uh, from radicals, which makes studying them a lot harder.